Hey everybody, it's Notorious Dad, Caleb Leverett. I've just got done with a field job just west of Seminole, Texas. And I, I'm a deadbeat dad. I busted. Ken Paxton is the Attorney General of the state of Texas. And last, today's December the 8th, it's so last Wednesday, Ken Paxton's office, the office of the Attorney General Child Support Division, seized my bank account. Because, yes, I admittedly am behind on child support. I don't make any bones about it. But I just wanted to show everybody what a deadbeat dad, according to the state of Texas, looks like. A blue-collar dude like me. I'm in my field truck. I did put on my nice little Notorious Dad sweater. My hoodie. Get that at our, our spreadsheet thing. Nice muddy boots. This. This is where my main tool bag is. There. Here's a bunch of drill bits. All kinds of shit I've been collecting over the last 22, 23 years. And here got all kinds of real nice Milwaukee tools, power tools. This thing, I call it the ex-wife because man, it will tear some shit up. Got some sockets here, got my metric stuff here, got this big light. Over here, take my fancy tailgate off. Open this sucker up and look what deadbeat dads collect. Here's all my pry bars and big pliers and bunch of more sockets and hammers and all kinds of crap I've been collecting over the years. Up there's generator, spare gas, ladder, a bunch of hoses. That's a $10,000 manifold that just changed for a customer. And over here, oh, come on, baby, come on. All kinds of just, I don't even worry with what all it is, but it's. Probably, I don't know how many thousands of dollars worth it is. There's bolt selection, torch, all kinds of chemicals. This is my old one beast. Bought it off of a friend of mine. And I'll get that in a minute. I gotta get out of the wind. I had about mm, 80 or 90,000 miles when I had it. I got a real good deal. Now it's got 100. 40, I've put 50,000 miles on it just in the last year. I had it, I bought it a year ago in November. So yeah, a little over, just a hair over a year ago. 20,000 miles of those were spent driving back and forth from San Antonio because now I live back in Obis. So anyway, this is what a deadbeat dad looks like. And it's all thanks to Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is running presumably again for attorney general in 2018 so next year ken paxton as soon as he took office almost right off the bat was under all kinds of fraud investigations fraud 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 taking kickbacks all kinds of stuff so you know someone like me is like hmm where there's smoke there's fire i've I get accused of being a lot of things, but you know, a fraud's never one. Uh, occasionally, my super trolls will accuse me of that, but generally, I'm known as being the guy that a dad that just shows up. We were at a rally. I went to a rally uh, two days ago, Wednesday, and it was at the state capitol, and it was a meeting, and with Ken Paxton and some other people. And there's about, I'd say, two dozen people that drove, everybody at least drove 200 miles. I drove about 400 miles. Well, come to find out, I couldn't get in because another buddy of mine, Frank Bustos, he tried to get in and they wouldn't let, They, I guess they were running a background check. Well, I didn't even try to get in because I'm assuming if you've watched the video, we're one week before court on July 21st, one week before that, um, a cop he was wanting to save the day or something he pulled me over and my windshield freedom sticker had expired and so he extorted some money out of me well come to find out you can't pay the fine 
until you get the vehicle registered. You can't get the vehicle registered if you're behind on child support. So I show up to this rally about child support and is actually more, not just child, it's more for um, equal, equal time, 50-50 parenting. And man, I was talking to this one young man and I'd mentioned this in the Facebook video, but not everybody on YouTube follows me on Facebook, so I'm kind of repeating myself on some of this. And I couldn't remember his name at the time. I've since reached out to him. We're Facebook friends now, and I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want to get him in trouble. Anyway, this young man, he was just, he, he was literally in tears talking to this reporter from the Dallas Morning News, I think. And uh, he's he was just so frustrated he says we talked to them and it's like it was just whew, like they didn't even give a shit they didn't they didn't care and he got into tears he said i'm trying everything i can't pay what they're demanding i pay i'm poor i'm a well i'm not even gonna say what he does for a living it's a very respectable hands-on uh career so I, like i said i don't want to get him in trouble but he said i've been a conservative Baptist, Republican, or maybe not Baptist, Christian anyway, voting Republican my whole life. And I feel like the Republican Party is, is just dumping on me. I said, brother, I feel you. I was raised Baptist. I was raised conservative, listened to Rush Limbaugh day in, day out. And it was conservative Christian Republican politicians that took my son away from me. He had already knew who I was because he'd seen all the Parker videos. And took my money away from me and it ultimately took 60 days of my freedom on the outside of the you know freedom put me in jail for 60 days and again the the ironic part about this whole thing is the only time I've ever missed visitation with my kids is when I was the state put me in jail for being a good dad and it I think it sunk into him so this election season, I quit voting years ago because I got, back then I was real depressed and that's certainly not the case anymore, obviously. But I think I'll start voting again. And Ken Paxton is not getting my vote. <laughs> I assure you that. In fact, I think it's gonna be real fun to actively campaign for anybody but Ken Paxton. If I'm not mistaken, he just barely won anyways. And that's back when you know, everybody was tired of Barack Obama or whatever. I don't get into partisan politics, but I think he just barely got in. And then all of a sudden, all this fraud stuff started popping up. And he was getting investigated and on and on and on and on. And I was this close, this close to pulling out of this hole that I've been in for 10 years. I got some wonderful relief. Finally, finally. A judge listened to me and listened to my case. Judge Sarah Kate Billingsley, bless her heart. She let my kids choose. That was a great, great relief. I literally had a check filled out for $2,000, roughly for two months worth of child support and $2,100 in rent. And I, good thing I didn't ship them off because they would have bounced and then I'd have been a real criminal. And it's just, oh, it's, oh, it just, I, I get so close, so close, and then poof, they yank that rug. But this time, I'm not depressed anymore. Uh, not much really bothers me. I mean, yeah, I got upset when Blaine was thrown in jail and Nick's hospital twice, but I wasn't, I was still happy, overall happy. So, fortunately, you know, this has been a weird year, financially speaking. I went the whole month of June without... A single field call not one not one paying job not one dime bro was brought in other than you know whatever I got from YouTube which isn't much so I went looking for some work and I'm not gonna go into details but my own father called the note on this truck and demanded that either the truck or the payoff like 7,500 bucks so I hadn't had paid that off because if I lose this I have no significant way of making significant amounts of money. And I was this close, this close to sending another check. You know, the, like six weeks up to uh, prior to July 21st, I think I mailed off to the, the, the uh, child support people like eight or $9,000. 
thought, well, that'll suffice because now that I want Blaine, you know, my child support goes down because that's one less child I'm supporting. And then I was also awarded child support, but it's been almost five months, four and a half months, and we don't know, I still don't have the paperwork done. I've been waiting, waiting. I'm like, okay, maybe the paperwork get done any day. So all this time, it's been racking up, and even with interest at the old rate. And I just got hammered again. So now all the crap that I had tied to that account, utilities and all that, I gotta change all that over and I'm just scrambling just so we don't get our electricity cut off. And we've had a snowstorm come in, uh, not for last, or, or yeah, not for last. I mean, I even finally, like two weeks prior to it getting uh, uh, seized, finally got Blaine an Uber account. So just in case, I don't like to do it. I'd rather pick him up myself, but every now and then I get caught in the field. So he'll have a ride home because, you know, Parker, bless his heart, he's obviously, he lives with me still. And uh, he's helped out a few times, you know, but like four, or five, I think he's had to use it four or five times. But those four or five times, I was gone way out in the field and I made some really good money so that I can pay this child support that's demanded of me. And of course, I'll get criticized for not being there and then I'll get criticized for not paying. And, you know, some people you just can't win no matter what you do. Everything I do is going to be wrong to some people. But anyway, yeah, Ken Paxton, you're not getting my vote this year. And, and anybody that follows me, I'd encourage you to not vote for Ken Paxton. Because if I'm a deadbeat dad for not being able to pay what's demanded of me and Ken Paxton stole my bank account I think Ken Paxton's a deadbeat attorney general and we don't need any deadbeat attorney generals we need good attorney generals you know an attorney general that'll look out for Texans and not be mandated by the feds through title 4d or whatever it's called where the feds give them give Texans like 70 or 80 million dollars that's what somebody told me as an incentive to hire 2800 workers i mean hackers to hack bank accounts like mine and extort money to the tune of like four billion dollars a year that's a really lucrative business if you make it legal extorting four billion dollars a year and the thing is i text the kid's mom uh while i was driving home and she i said did the you know, I told her, they took it. I said, did you at least get it? She said, no, I hadn't seen a dime. They're, they're, it's, been, it's, been over, it's been over a week. And they, the, the Attorney General's Office Child Support Division, they say it's in the best interest of the child. Well, I kind of beg to differ. If it feels in the best interest of my children that they have this money because I'm a deadbeat dad that I haven't paid, then what does that make y'all? Y'all stole my money, and you won't even give it to my kid's mom? <laughs> People are starting to wake up. They're starting to question all this raw, raw government's good, and every, you know, as long as it's my party that's in power. Bull! Man, question everything ain't just a tattoo on my arm. Well, I'm going to get off my soapbox here, but I hope everybody considers not hitting your kids. Uh, a friend of mine... <laughs> I won't get into details, but she said as a way to motivate the kids to do or not do something, she suggested pranking them. She said, pranking, not spanking. And I thought, I like that. Yeah. Because the boys, God knows, they love to prank me. It's one of their favorite things to do. So anyway, I'm going off on rants or tears or tangents. and Consider not hitting your kids. Do Please consider not voting for Ken Paxton. Even if you are a Republican, and you, I, most Republicans, well, I will not vote Democrat. Well, vote Libertarian. Try Libertarian. I'm Libertarian. They're actually Libertarian Party. They're not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not in bed with them. But that's at least a third option, not the duopoly that we've got now. So, peace, love, dogs, kids, nonviolent parenting. Love you all. Peace. Bye.